Greetings in the most holy name of Jesus Christ. This is the month of September. This is the ninth month of 2019. After September is over, we only have three months left in the year 2019. After that, the year will be history. So that means we got to get busy. We got to make sure that 2019 is the year that we wanted it to be in our lives. So we have to redeem some time. It is, it is the month before we go into the last quarter of the year. After September, you know, we have October, November, and December, the last quarter. So three-fourths of the year will be over after the month of September. Only 92 days left. After the month of September, there will be only 92 days left. So this month is a very important month to set the tone for the last quarter of the year. I want to talk about this month. This is not the way it should be. Now I want you to hear that because we're going to talk about that, that this month. This is not the way it should be. So if we want our lives to be what God designed them to be, then we must recognize when things are not the way God meant it to be in our lives. And we're going to start off talking about a young man that is incredible. And he thought life was great. He thought he was doing an incredible job. His name is Josiah. But he realized until he compared it to the word of God that his life wasn't what God designed it to be. So I want you to focus this month. Remember, after September, only 92 days left. So I want you to focus this month. It is pivotal because we got the distraction of Thanksgiving and Christmas and all of that. So this month is pivotal that we focus on making 2019 the year we want it to be. Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast. To the month of September, day number two, we're talking about this is not the way it's supposed to be. Now, that's the way God gave it to me, so it's some power in just saying that. Uh, Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 says and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So when we phrase that like that this is not the way it's supposed to be. To me that that genders the spiritual indignation the spiritual anger that God has placed in all of us against what the enemy is trying to do in our lives. This is not the way it should be. And when you're saying that, you're supposed to be looking at the thing that's trying to tell you this is the way your life's supposed to be. And it's trying to convince you to accept it and everything will be all right. You got to live with it. It's too late to change. You're too old. This is your life from now on. You have to look at that thing in your life and say, this is not the way it's supposed to be. And when you say that, you have to say that with violence to take it by force, to take it by force. We, we're not angry with anyone. We don't get angry with people, but we understand that our enemy is the devil. So our focus is on that invisible enemy, and we have to confront him. If we don't confront him, if we don't, have to conf- if we don't confront Many things in our lives we will accept and we will live a life that is beneath the privileges that God has given unto us. So we're talking about Manasseh. On yesterday we talked about Manasseh, the grandfather who was very wicked, who even sacrificed his own sons. And then we talked about his son Ammon. And Ammon, like his father Manasseh, was very wicked. Now, you can go back and, and, and rehearse that in uh, September 1st. Go back and listen to that podcast again. But today we want to move forward, 
in Second Kings chapter 22, we want to look at Josiah and see what the Bible says about Josiah. This is what it says about Josiah. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And it says in verse 2, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Now, he takes over the kingdom at the age of eight. And at the age of eight, he's looking at some things that his father and grandfather has done. And Josiah says, this is not the way. Now, I'm saying that. I mean, he's looking at this, and this is not the way this is supposed to be. From the knowledge he, he had, grandfather set an idol up in the temple of the living God. Josiah knew that was not what God wanted. This is not the way it should be. But everything that he was doing and all the good things that he did, and he cleaned up some stuff. Make no mistake about it. He, he, he undid some stuff that his forefathers, I say forefathers, his, his grandfather and his father had done. Josiah went to work. He went to work. And he started cleaning up the mess that his forefather, I said forefather, forefathers, that's his, grand, his grandfather and also his father. They had created a mess in the land of Israel. And they had put idols in the very temple of the living God, which, which had brought a judgment on the nation. And you're going to see that. And that judgment was going to steal whole firm. Brought a judgment on the nation. So so Josiah started doing some things. He started doing some things. And he started with the house of the Lord. Must start at the place of worship. Renovation and change must start in the house of God. So he started removing these statues and these idols that the people were uh, bowing down to and worshiping. And in the midst of doing all of that, in the midst of doing all of that, Josiah is going to discover that in all of his efforts, he's still falling short. He's falling short because he don't have the word of God. It is our God. It is it is. The way God orders our footsteps. So Josiah is, is at work. He's supervising. He's, he's starting a revival. A revival in the house of God. Revival. Because what he saw in church was not the way it was supposed to have been. Now, you know, you've got to stay with me for a second. Well, Josiah, even though he was eight years old and he grew up, he saw some things that that's not the way it's supposed to be. That's not the way church is supposed to be. Now, can you imagine if all of us looked at what God says about the house of worship, about church, according to his word, the way leaders are supposed to live and, and the word that we're supposed to teach and preach, and then look at what we're seeing on a daily basis. Then... We will come to the conclusion, basically, what Jos Josiah came to the conclusion based on his actions. That's not the way it's supposed to be. So he started revival. He started tearing down, tearing down statues, burning up stuff. And in the midst of renovating the temple, something happened. And I want to read that to you. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Axe Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in axeministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. Read to, I want to read to you what happened. And this is 2 Kings chapter 22. 
starting verse 8. Then Hilkiah the high priest said to Shapen, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. So Shaphan, the scribe, went to the king, bringing the king word, saying, Your servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of those who do the work, who oversee the house of the Lord. Then Shaphan, the scribe, showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Now it happened when the king heard the words of the book of the law that he tore his clothes. He tore his clothes. Now I want you to think about that. The turn of the clothes is intense repentance. It is, it is shock and amazement. And, and it, is, it is a different dimension of humility and Josiah, when he heard what God's word said, and all the good that he had been doing, and all the great things he had been doing, and redoing what his father, you know, undoing the things that his father had done, and burning statues, when he heard the word, he realized that he was off. He realized that even what he was doing, it was better than his grandfather, better than his father, but he still was off off it still the way it still wasn't the way it should be now god says to josiah now i'm not going to do it in your day but i'm going to bring judgment and he's going to bring judgment because of what had happened judgment is imminent but but josiah his best effort his best effort to do what is right when you don't have the guide of god's word you're always going to fall short so when Josiah saw what was right, the Bible says he tore, he, he tore his clothes. He went down in total repentance, total humility, because he didn't know the way it should really be. He was going about what he knew. What, you know, he, he, he knew his grandfather and father was so far off. He knew that was wrong. So he had majored on being different from his father and his grandfather different i'm gonna be different from them but in his effort to be different from them he still was so short when it came he was short when it came to the word of god he wasn't measuring up to what god's word said so we want to i want to set the tone here so you can hear what i'm telling you as we're doing this series on this not the way it should be and i want to say it like that i want to say it i want you to feel that and when you see certain things in your life, now in order for you to see that, you got to be present. You got to be present in your own life, present in your marriage, present in the lives of your children. Now we'll talk about that at the latter part of this month, being present. But I want you to see, I want you to see and understand that the theme, this is not the way it should be, must be your war cry. It's a war cry. This is not the way it should be. When you say that, I want you to get your mind ready to make some changes. Get your mind ready to look at the way it should be. Use God's word to line our lives up with the way it should be. Because this is not the way it should be. Brothers and sisters, just take, just take a moment to think about that. Even when you stop listening to this or you listening to it, you go back and listen to it again and you listen to day one again, which is pivotal to get this foundation in your spirit. And you look at different things in your life. This is not the way that's supposed to be. There are struggles in our lives. It's not supposed to be like that. And we did a series a long time ago on the struggles that we created. We created certain struggles in our lives. They were not supposed to be there. We made decisions and we made choices and we created certain struggles in our lives. And it wasn't supposed to be like that. Now, God says that we can use his word when we realize the way it's supposed to be. And we can make some incredible changes. Do not allow the devil to make you think it's too late for you. 
As long as you're inhaling and exhaling, you can do a whole bunch of good. Let me, let me tell you this. Just think about this. If you live 100 years and you don't know Jesus, but you're introduced to Jesus, you become a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you, you, you die the next day after living 100 years, heaven is yours. I just, just think about that because the devil don't want us to understand that. He don't want us to understand that when we come to God, the greatest thing we're going to receive is eternal life, to live with him forever. He want us to, he want to make us think it's too late. You're too old. It, it, it's, your time is up. But that is not true. Brothers and sisters, I want you to stay with us as we go a little deeper into this theme we have. And, and this is the battle cry. This is our battle cry. This is not the way it's supposed to be. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Axe Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Axe Ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you.